everybody. <laughs> we are live, live. Good. Here we are, close to the southern boundary of Kenya, which I think is probably only about 300 meters that away. And what we have is some remnants of the 2017 wildebeest and zebra migration. There they are, all together. See them? And they're right close to the Tanzanian border. Now, many of you would have seen during the course of the migration season, uh, much as we try to avoid it, you'd have seen herds of cattle come wandering past from time to time. And they certainly have had a very good migration season, the cattle. They come in from time to time and then go away. I don't think they do a huge amount of harm at this stage. But the shortness of the grass here, I don't think is necessarily only due to the wildebeest and the zebra. Of course, the Maasai have been herding cattle in this area for thousands, well, not thousands, but probably 8,000 years or so. And so it's not surprising that the ecosystem thrives even with cattle in the area. And there are some black rocks. They're different from the black rocks on which the lions live. But we're going to go back towards the Black Rock Pride. Yeah, I think we'll probably wind our way slowly back there now as it starts to cool. And hopefully sort of round about sundown we'll be with them again. But it's still very hot out here. I mean, this is the hottest afternoon I've experienced here since last year. And like I say, I probably sat at about 85 degrees or so. I think they do. There are some that will say not and some that will actually give you a definite uh, answer to this, and I, I'm not sure that you can, you, unless you collar every single one. You say, oh, some of the, do some of the migrants become residents and stay here and then perhaps migrate the next year? I'm sure that they do, especially the zebra. I'm pretty sure that they would do that. The wildebeest, yeah, I, I reckon some of them stay. This, why wouldn't they? You know, It's not like it gets freezing cold here and they've got to leave. Uh, there is plenty of food, especially after a good rainy year like this, and I wonder if that so-called loiter herd won't become much bigger after a year of rain like we've had here this year. So I'm going to say yes, some do. Now, why don't we just drift slowly down the road here? It's such a beautiful scene, this. I've never been this far south and this far to the east, and I have to say, I mean, it's always nice to explore a new area, but this is just really special. And I love a good hill, you see, and there are lots of lovely hills around here. James, you're wondering if along with the topi, it's birthing season for any other animals here in the Mara. Well, the impala seem to be giving birth. So, yes, I'd say for the impala. Certainly one or two Thompson's gazelle are giving birth. So, absolutely, I'd say perhaps for them too. And there is one of my favorites, the coaxed hartebeest, just having a little bit of a jog through the mixed herd. You see him there, folk? There he goes. <laughs> they are such funny, ungainly looking creatures. Hiding behind a rock and a tree that is, uh, no idea what it is, I'm afraid. Oh, he's great. Dylan, you want to know if there are any koalas here in Africa? That's a really interesting question that has actually quite a long answer. The answer, well, the short answer is no, there are no koalas here. You want to know what animals live in trees here? I guess the primates, the monkeys, uh, the hyraxes. There is a species of hyrax that Steph was showing you earlier. They're called the tree hyrax, unsurprisingly, that lives in trees. Squirrels we get that live in trees here. Bats, of course, and of monkeys. But we don't get koalas. Koalas are, of course, marsupials. And marsupials are only found in the New World, and I think there's one species, if I'm not mistaken, found, not in the New World, in Australia, in Australasia. And I think there's one species that's found in uh, South America, but there are no African marsupials. And a marsupial, of course, is a mammal that gives birth to a very, very underdeveloped fetus that then climbs into the pouch where the nipples are, and it feeds in the pouch and lives inside the pouch until it's big enough to kind of be independent. 
and a kangaroo is a classic example, of course, of a marsupial. All the mammals in Africa are placental mammals. In other words, they function exactly the same as a human being functions, with internal development of the youngster and then birth. It's a really interesting question. So no marsupials here. And of course the koala, one of the laziest animals in the world, next to, uh, well, rangers basically, guides or tend to be the laziest people in the world. But other than guides, uh, koala renowned for being lazy because, of course, its nutrient, uh, the nutrients it derives from the gum trees it eats, very, very poor indeed. And so it really doesn't have a huge amount to work with in terms of energy. That's why I was giving a bit of a giggle at the beginning because, you know, the koala's renowned for being so lazy, but I know people just as lazy as that. Let's carry on going, drifting down this magical little road. The sun has been blinding today from the time it popped up over the horizon. Fergus and I have been shielding our sensitive eyes what colour are your eyes, Fergus? Yes, they used to be blue, they are now red. You see, our sensitive blue eyes. We're going down into these lovely rock fields. They really are just spectacular. Until, of course, you come across a lion lurking behind one and you happen to be on foot. 